Hey guys, um, my name is Jacob. I'm otherwise known as Ye. I am a CSGO slash Valorant professional player. And this is actually going to be my first YouTube series, actually first YouTube, uh, YouTube video. Um, and before I start with anything with like cross replacement peaking, because that's going to be the you know, main idea of this video, I kind of want to explain you know, why I started this whole YouTube series and like kind of like what you can expect from me in the future. Because uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping to do a little bit more of this. Um, in the coming like days, weeks, slash months, whatever time frame you want to throw on it. Um, if you want to skip this, I'll, I'll leave uh, a timestamp in the video. But um, to give you like some background of why I wanted to kind of um, start this whole YouTube series is I actually got my main inspiration from uh, Adren. He was a former professional player and now the coach of Team Liquid CS:GO right now. So. Uh, when he during his time when he was a professional player, he had this YouTube series uh, for CS:GO that he went over like a bunch of different ideas, like things like clutching or like map control or like when to do this or different situations or how to improve like aspects of your game. And I, for me at the time before I was like a professional, I really used a lot of that to help improve my game and help get to where I am now. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing for Valorant. And before before I even started this whole series, I kind of went out there and I looked up, uh, you know, kind of like who the YouTubers were at the time, kind of making the videos, and I looked at some of the guides and things like that. And honestly, um, I was I was kind of like disappointed and a bit angry at some of them, because uh, some of them are like, it's just like you know, they're flat out lying and they're like, we got this information from the top players, the top coaches, you know. To come back next video and like we'll we'll have more information and we'll keep you up to date with the current meta and you know it was, it was things like that and i'm just like number one like these guys don't play at like a you know professional level um i even asked like a lot of my buddies who are all in the pro scene and stuff like that i'm like hey has this guy ever talked to you and they just flat out said no like no one's ever contacted them about anything and i even watched like some of the videos myself and you know I'll give them credit where credit's due. Like they go over some of like the really key concepts, you know, you know, certain things that are like very important to your game. But overall, they're it, it, they didn't go in very in depth about it. Like they kind of like threw in like some like BS that like no professional player does. You know, it's just kind of like and then like some of the situation scenarios like they they were just like flat out wrong in and like it, it kind of like <laughs> kind of made me a little bit mad, you know, because like you have someone who you know was making money off of that or like misinforming people you know under the guise of like hey this is the right way to do things so i kind of wanted to correct a little bit of that and plus like you know i kind of wanted to start a youtube series I, I thought it might be interesting um by the way um like i said this will be my first youtube video so if you guys have any advice for me or like things you want to see improved if my mic is bad or the camera's bad or anything like that you know please let me know i i, I really want to get this you know to be a higher quality you know video and just you know series in general so like I said, please let me know. But anyways, um, the topics that we'll be covering today is going to be crosshair placement and just kind of like peaking in general and just kind of how like, you, you move around the map. So how about we get started? All right, so the first thing I'm going to be talking about here today is crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is one of the most important slash fundamental aspects of improving your aim and having, you know, being able to win more gunfights consistently. And the reason good crosshair placement is so fundamental is because it allows you to be able to headshot people a lot more consistently and a lot more quickly. Because what it is is essentially putting your crosshair at the head level. And at least that's what good crosshair placement is, is having your crosshair at their head. And the reason that's so effective and like when you're you know, when you're at like a head level is like let me give you an example. If there's like an enemy like right here, let's just say he's sitting right here, being able to like come around this corner and look, my crosshair's literally like on his head or very close to his head and just being able to shoot, not only is it a lot easier, a lot more efficient, it's going to be a lot more consistent overall versus bad crosshair placement, which would be something like you come around a corner and you're aiming at his feet. So if you want to get that headshot, you're going to have to flick up or pray your bullets when they, you know, the recoil comes up, hits them, or, you know, you're just going to have to go for the spray kill. You're just going to have to shoot him in the body and hope he dies and hope he doesn't headshot you. So 
that's what I noticed like a lot of people kind of don't do very well, especially if they're coming over from other games, and it's something that's super important for a game like Valorant, which rewards precision shots. So let me kind of show you what good crosshair placement is, and in the process, I'm going to kind of show you like some like how to move and stuff like that, but just mainly focus on my crosshair, because we'll go over movement, we'll go over how you take angles, how you jiggle, how you peek and stuff like that uh, and later in the video, but just really focus on like how my crosshair moves. So let's get started. So I'm going to use this angle at B, for example. I'm on ascent right now. Um, I'm on, well, technically I'm on the defending side, but I'm attacking. But um, we're going to be attacking on the B side. So watch my crosshair and look how like I position it. So right now I'm maintaining like head level throughout. Like I'm holding a quarter. I'm still maintaining, maintaining head level, maintaining head level throughout this, maintaining head level. Now watch how I position my crosshair when I come around here. Something that, that's going to be a note is like there is going to be an elevation change right here. So when I'm coming around this angle, it's like, okay, I want to transition on to the next angle. So obviously I clear this first, but look how my crosshair shifts. I shift it to a higher elevation, and now my crosshair is at head level for this angle. Okay. Then I'm going to have to transition it again because it could be like a guy around this angle right here. And then I'm transitioning it again for this angle right here, this angle right here, again for this angle. And I'm just going around. And I'm maintaining headshot level for whatever I want to peek. So that is by definition what good crosshair placement is because in all fights, I'm aiming directly at their head. So I had the best chance of getting that instant precision kill. And that's fundamentally what good crosshair placement is. And something that's going to take some time and practice to do is kind of learning how to, first off, knowing the angles. Because look, I instantly, I, I know this angle right here, and I know it's an elevation switch right here. So my crosshair is going to be a little bit higher to adjust for this elevation climb. So I'm adjusted for that. I also know this is an elevation climb right here. So my crosshair, like I'm kind of like pre-aiming this like wall right here and I'm peeking using, and I'm at head level again with my crosshair. And the same applies if, you, if you're if you on an elevated sword. So, so say like I'm on this elevated platform, as you can tell, it's a little bit elevated. My crosshair is going to be a little bit lower here than normal because I have to account for their head and for their body being on a lower surface than me. So my crosshair is going to be like a little bit lower than normal. And then again, like as I come like down this elevated surface, I have to adjust. I have to go up or down and adjust accordingly. And same applies if I go towards the mid courtyard here on the set. This is an elevation change right here. So I have to change my crosshair and my elevation. This would be up around head level. So when I peak and stuff, I'm at head level. And then if I want to come down here, I have to adjust my crosshair as such, because now this is head level. And as you see, I'm kind of jiggle picking in between. I'll, I'll discuss that here and actually very short, shortly. But this is the general idea of like having good crosshair placement is always being at the head level. Again, uh, I'm adjusting my crosshair again, again. I lowered it again, and now I'm I'm elevating and and I'm lowering it as I go. So this is going to take some practice and time, but it is very important because it enables you to get the best fights possible. You're, you're going to always be you know, aiming at their head ready to shoot, and learning to get those instant headshots is going to enable you to be a much better player, just in general. So, so now we're going to talk about peaking. And in my opinion, I think peaking is just as important as crosshair placement. I get a lot of these guys, and they just focus on crosshair placement. It's just like if you just you know use just stick the crosshair to the head level. You, you just do that. You're gonna win more fights. You're gonna do that, and they're not necessarily wrong. You're gonna win more fights, but peaking and how you peak angles is just as important, and they kind of play hand in hand. I'll show you kind of like what I mean by this. And I'll just zoom over here real quick. I'll show you what I kind of mean by this. Um, it, when you move like back and forth, your crosshair moves along with it. So having good crosshair placement and like kind of using your movement and stuff like that and peeking with it, they go hand in hand. Like you need both. So l let me show you. Um, 
just a few different peaks and like kind of like what you can do to better like improve your game to die less the bait out shots and the, just to have better fights like overall and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I mean so I'm gonna be attacking but I'm gonna use this angle as an example so let's just say you want to take a cent mid and I'll zoom over here All right. so I see them I see a lot of people do this sometimes with uh, you know operators they'll post up for an angle like this and in this case, if you were to wide peak, wide peaking being, this is what, like, I, I would say the most common thing people do, uh, especially lesser ex experienced players, they tend to just go, like, they just swing wide, no care in the world, and right into that angle to take a fight. Now, you can sometimes get away with this if you have really good aim, and you stop and you're super fast. Most of the time, if someone's super posted like this and he's just waiting, it's just a free kill and he falls away and now your team is down a man so instead we're gonna be talking about a concept called jiggle peeking and jiggle peeking so this is a the preface this is gonna be in a situation in which like let's just say you don't have smokes utility or flashes or things like that and you're just going in dry maybe you have like a sheriff I, I have no clue so anyways we're gonna go into this jiggle peeking is doing this kind of movement in which it doesn't, it doesn't really matter the distance too much, but you're kind of going back and forth. And what this does is while you can't necessarily see them, they can see your shoulder. So the purpose of jiggle peeking isn't to take a fight. It isn't to like, you know, really like um, shoot and, you know, try to go for a kill. It's to bait out a shot or to get information on where that player is. So from his perspective, He's going to see my shoulder, and if I can force him, if he's not well trained, he's going to he's going to take a shot, going to whiff, and then I can post up on this angle. <laughs> the Valorant server actually crashed. I was uh, playing on, but um, the next step here is I'm going to talk about another form of peak, which is called uh, jump peeking, or and it's basically the same idea of. Um, I would say jiggle peeking. This is a little more advanced and you're probably not going to use this very often, but what it is is it's mainly used for people who are using uh, operators, but basically the core idea is you jump and you pull back quickly. And what this does is they'll see like a big part of you, but as soon as you fling it and turn your model, you're going to be behind the wall. So it's really good to bait out um, op shots. So it's like... You know, it's just you're showing like a bit of yourself and then you just turn back into the wall. So you could even do your gun even so it points out and then you come back in, you tuck in the wall. And the way you do that is run forward and I'll try to do a slow motion jump and I, I turn away, I, I strafe away. And it's just a circle motion kind of thing. Yeah, it takes some time to get the timing out of it because obviously you don't want to go like and get like stuck in the wall like this. Or you, you go too far and then you, you don't tuck in. So it takes a little bit of practice, but super effective in like uh, baiting out shots. Like for example, like right there, that was too far. So it, it just takes a little bit of practice. But if you get it down, it can be really effective in uh, dealing with ops. You can also do different forms of like jump peeking. So this might not be a bad one. It is, um, you know, kind of like just jump spotting to see if there's a guy like posted for like right here as well to avoid, you know, getting deaths and things like that. So it, this is just a limit, um, especially if you don't have abilities, you don't have smokes, this is just a limit, you know, someone, you know, just being ready to post up and he just gets a kill for free, on you, you know, or if he's just holding this, you, you all he's going to see is like a part of your body, so he has to flip up and try to hit that, so, you know, it, it's just to try and like, th these are things you can do to, um, you know, bait out shots, get information, and just play a more consistent way of, um, you know, Valorant or CS or whatever it may be, so. So, another question you guys might have is, is like, Jacob, how do I know where to put my crosshair? And one of the ways you can determine where to kind of, like, put your crosshair, or where to be, like, expecting enemies in general, is you have to think about the map. So, on the CT side, there's going to be, like, a wall right here. So, you have to think and visualize where the enemies could possibly be. So, and what I mean by that is, so the round starts. Here are the possibilities. So like, let's just say um, I'm a defender right now. The possibilities that I have is like, number one, I could be posted like right here. I could be waiting and I could late peek. 
I could jump across this cubby, right? I kind of just wait, or even like I could just hold this angle right here. Or I could push up here and like, you know, just be really aggressive. Those are the possibilities as a defender of what, um, what he could do and where he could be. So when I take this angle and stuff like that, I'm first, you know, clearing to see if he's holding that close left. It's like, okay, he's not. Okay, he's not clearing that hole away. So he could technically be pushed up if um, my teammates haven't spotted it, or he could be in this cubby right here. And so like, okay, he's not late peeking. Doesn't seem like he's doing much. I'm gonna limit this anyways. And I'm gonna kind of like walk up. Like like I said, I'm just doing. I'm I'm doing this fairly quickly, so it's gonna be a little sloppy. I'm trying to methodically take this. Okay, there's no one peeking mid. Okay, nothing here. Okay. It's not at the box. That's cool. Anybody in this cubby before I peek this? Doesn't look like it. But I can't clear it completely, which, which kind of sucks. So the best I can do is like, okay, there's nothing there. Um, I'm going to take this angle. By the way, that's that might be a pro tip is you want to change like the elevation. So his crosshair placement is going to be a little off. You could use this ledge. So anyways, I'm going to clear this. Clear this. Okay, there's nothing really peeking. You know, okay, I don't really see anybody in that cubby. So I'm going to get behind this box quickly. And then I'm going to clear this uh, close corner right here where it could be. And then that's how I cleared that angle, you know? So, and like I said, the angles in which I knew to clear were just based off where he could be, you know? And especially if I have, like, no information and I know there's a guy that normally plays there and he's just not peeking at all. It's just like, you know, that might be a little weird, so... Anyways, I hope that gives you like a better explanation. Yeah, I'll do one from mid as well. So let, let's just say I want to push up like, I'm not sure what people call this right now, but push up this area right here. Okay, and I want to avoid like kind of like that area. So anyways, like whenever I clear this, I'm like, okay, let's focus on this area. Okay, don't see anything, don't see anything. Okay, cool. Go back here, make sure there's no one here. Like I said, I'm doing this kind of quickly, so it's a little sloppy. Anyways, we're taking these angles kind of slow because there could be someone here. Okay, I don't see anything. I'm kind of walking up. I'm crouching right now, so you can't see like the tip of my head if he peeks. And now I'm at like a height in which you can't see. So I'm like, okay. All right, let me clear this. Let me clear these close angles. I'm pretty sure you can see someone if he's tucked in that corner, but I'm not 100% sure. But I'll clear it anyways. So anyways. When you're in a situation also like this, where he could be in this deep right corner and this deep left corner, and you can't really clear him up, something you might do, and what a lot of people do, is they jiggle back, they jiggle like that. So what this does is, if he's in this corner, then you just you just kill him. But if he's not, then um, this person will shoot and most likely not kill you because you just jiggle real quick. You just throw a little thing, he'll shoot, and then you're like, oh, okay, and you just kill him. But anyways, after you, after you clear that angle, and again, if you listen, Listen real quick. I'm not making any footsteps when I jiggle, just so you know. Like, this is completely silent. I, you hear my noise right there. But when you do this, it's completely silent. And this is something that's going to take a little practice getting the time down, but it's pretty forgiving. So anyways, after I clear those two angles, so like I said, I'll just do that, and then... Okay, there's nothing. Cool. I might start like walking up here, you know, clearing this angle like this. It's like, okay, nothing here. Notice how I'm holding like this close wall right here. So in order for, if there is somebody like right here, like kind of like chilling, he would have to swing out wide and expose himself to these angles right here in order to kill me. So anyways, like I said, I'm kind of like taking this. I have to clear this close left corner. I'm like, okay, there's nothing there. Okay, there could be someone here. Now I start taking this angle. And he could be like all down here or something like that. It's like, okay, could be here. Yeah. And then I, I would think I, for me personally, like I would kind of clear this and just go like that. But like I said, I don't see a lot of people holding an angle like this. So <laughs> like I, it just kind of depends. But anyway, so just clear it and things like that. And like I said, sometimes it's going to be a little risky because like sometimes you can't help but be exposed to an angle like this and an angle like this and you have to choose one. But like I said, just, just kind of like how I do it is like you jiggle like back and forth and see if you can bait out a shot. But like I said, sometimes it's unavoidable, you know, ultimately. That's where utility and teammates come in as well. So hopefully that explains a little bit better on like how you clear angles. Like I said, really focus on trying not to do something like...
like this, where you're just wide swinging, because like again, you can have an operator, and that's a free kill or a free or a free gunfight, and just kind of like swinging, you know, taking this stuff wide or things like that, or just you know, running it in, kind of, or just walking and kind of like just carelessly, like you're in the middle, like right? you're here, you're not holding any walls, you're just kind of like going like this. Because even though my crosshair is head level, how I'm peeking and taking these angles in these fights is very poor. Alright guys, well, thank you so much for tuning in to the video here today. Um, again, if you made it this far, it, it really does mean a lot. It really does. <laughs> again, this is my first ever YouTube video, so thank you so much for like tuning in. If you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know. Um, I'm hoping to make a Discord here soon, but it would mean a lot if you, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel and also maybe follow me on my Twitter at yay underscore CSGO. Uh, it means so much to me. So anyways, take care, guys.